All right, this video is going to be about conservative forces and potential energy. And then we're going to start off with the formula for finding the change in potential energy, which is denoted delta U, U.S. the potential energy. And it's the negative of force times distance, all right? If F, and I've denoted F sub C, is a conservative force. That's what that C is. All right, so let's now think about what this means. So force times distance, we know, is work. And so what we're really saying here is that the change in potential energy is the negative of the work done by a conservative force. All right, now we have to actually figure out what conservative forces and potential energy are. So let's just do an example. Say I have a ball. That's one kilogram and I lift it one meter. We know that I have to apply a force on the ball, right? And so the work done by me is going to be the force, which is actually going to be the weight of the object, which is, it, which is its mass times acceleration, right? I'm going against gravity times the distance that I apply that force. And that's going to give me 9.81 joules. So we know that I have, I have done 9.81 joules of work on this ball. And I need to do that work just to get the ball to go up against gravity. We can also say that the work done by gravity is equal to, well, it's also the mass times acceleration. One kilogram times 9.81 meters per second squared times one meter. But because the force of gravity is pulling it down, but the ball is actually going up, we know that this must actually be a negative number. So I, I often put the negative over the acceleration, but you don't have to. Negative 9.81 joules. So while I do 9.81 joules of work on the ball, gravity does negative 9.81 joules of work on the ball. And if you remember from our work energy theorem, you know that the net work here is going to be zero joules. Right, because if we add 9.81 and negative 9.81, we're going to get zero, and that's equal to the change in kinetic energy. So the ball doesn't go any faster or slower now that I've lifted it up. Okay, so gravity is a conservative force. Let's think about what that means. So if we use our formula here and we say, okay, well, the force of gravity, which would be this is indeed a conservative force, just take my word for it, then I should be able to use this formula to figure out the change in potential energy of this ball. So I could say that delta U is equal to the negative of whatever we got over here, which was one kilogram times negative 9.81 meters per second squared times one meter, and that would give us positive 9.81 joules. And what that would mean is that while the kinetic energy did not change, the potential energy did, and it gained 9.81 joules of potential energy. Well, what does that mean? We know that energy is the ability to do work, and so far we've been talking about kinetic energy, which is the energy that an object has associated with its, with its motion, right? But there's another type of energy, potential energy, which is associated with an object's position. So now that the ball is in a different position, I'm telling you that from here at point A to here at point B, the object gained potential energy. Right? It's not moving any faster than it used to be, but simply because of where it is, it has the ability to do more work. And we know that because if I lift the ball up from point A to point B and I let go, it'll move, right? I don't have to do anything. It moves by itself. And it moves by itself because that potential energy that it gained here is being converted into kinetic energy. And we kind of know that from our everyday experience. If we put work in against gravity, right, that means that gravity does negative work, then gravity will, in a way, give that work back to us. All we have to do is let go of it or push it off of something, and it will move seemingly by itself. All right, in the next video, we'll talk more about conservative forces and potential energy.